Good morning, uh, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Olivier Schwab. I'm the director for the World Economic Forum in China, uh, based in Beijing. Uh, since uh, 2001, after uh, China entered the WTO, um, Chinese companies have been globalizing at a, an expansion, exponentially rapid rate, uh, while at the same time the topic of corporate global citizenship uh, has become recognized the world over as uh, you know, a critical element uh, when corporations do business all over the world. Um, the World Economic Forum actually earlier this year uh, launched a, a report on practices of Chinese companies globalizing. And um, what we found is that it's a journey. Uh, we found some good practices, but uh, we also found that uh, there is still uh, some learning uh, that has to uh, that has to take place, and um, I'd like to hand over to uh, our facilitator this morning, Professor Helmut Schutte, professor of uh, at the um, China European uh, Business School, and he's going to lead the discussion uh, on this topic this morning. Professor, thanks very much, uh, uh, Olivier, um, and welcome to this uh, panel discussion. Uh, I am looking around here, and uh, obviously we're missing Mr. May. If somebody can try to find him, he was around um, before we really go into detail. We are dealing with uh, a rather complex issue. Uh, it's the nature of the topic. When one looks at the title, that's already rather complicated. Um, it's not made easier by containing a number of different uh, issues and terminologies. We talk about corporate governance, we talk about philanthropy, we talk about responsibility, we talk about uh, sustainability. All of this we bunch together under the label of corporate citizenship. And now we're moving this topic from the Chinese environment into the global sphere. Uh, and that's the reason why the World Economic Forum has taken this up. China plays a more, more important role in the world economy. Chinese companies more, more go abroad and face this as a new ch uh, challenge. Um, so if we start with corporate citizenship in China, we're dealing fundamentally with a variety of stakeholders. Um, it's the Chinese society in the broadest sense, the government, the local communities, the customers, uh, the workers, everybody is somewhat involved. Now we see increasingly that through the international observers, fundamentally NGOs or also the international press, there is some influence in this sphere coming into China, even affecting companies which operate only in China. Now, then we go abroad as a Chinese company. We are faced with very different local communities, local stakeholders, and again, international organizations such multilateral, multinational organizations such as internationally operating NGOs or uh, the international media and the international social media. So, lots of challenges here. Um, we have a panel with distinguished experts who have a lot of experience in this field of great variety. And I would uh, like to start with Claire Melford, who is the CEO of a powerful organization which is called International Business Leader Forum. It's an association which has about 150 large multinationals as members and is, I think, mainly concerned with the question of sustainability. And although the organization is headquartered in London, it does a lot of work across the world. So I would like, Claire, to call on you to give us your view of 
how you see Chinese companies fitting into these new requirements uh, which they are facing. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to, to speak. Um, as has been said, the, the International Business Leaders Forum works with global companies around the world to help their growth become more sustainable. And if we focus on China for a moment, the, the last two or three years in China has for us been characterized by, I would say, three uh, changes. The first is uh, we're seeing the emergence of a new generation of leaders, Chinese business leaders, who are making that transition from uh, philanthropy, which is, which is useful but ultimately unsustainable, to making sustainability, uh, both environmental and social sustainability, uh, a core competitive advantage of their business model, which is ultimately, of course, uh, much more sustainable in the long run. So the, the first thing that we're seeing is, is a new generation of leaders who are beginning to see sustainability both in China and in their international operations as a key competitive advantage. The second change uh, that we've seen, uh, particularly in the last 18 months, I would say, um, perhaps in part because of uh, the, the economic situation around the world, is a, a very welcome increasing voice of uh, Chinese business leaders in the, in the global policy debate. So I'd uh, quote as an example the, the speech given uh, by the, the, the head of Sinopec at the recent Rio Plus 20 conference in Rio de Janeiro. Um, and that is, a, is just one example of a much more prominent uh, voice for Chinese business leaders uh, in this global debate, which is, which is very welcome because uh, there is much wisdom to share and that voice has been uh, missing in, in previous years. And I think the third uh, extremely welcome chain, uh, change over the last several years, which uh, SASAC has in fact been leading, is enormous support from the Chinese government for incorporating sustainability into, into businesses um, and some of the, the regulations for state-owned enterprises on, on reporting, for example, are um, frankly the, the envy of uh, other countries around the world. So I think those three changes of a, a new generation of leadership, a, a greater voice for, uh, for, for Chinese business leaders on the world stage around sustainability and that the great government support would be uh, three of the very positive things that I would highlight as, as recent changes um, that Chinese multinationals are, are exporting abroad. Thanks very much, uh, Claire, for this good introduction and also your short uh, sh um, remarks. Mr. Huang, uh, you were already described as leading uh, Sasak in a way that it is the envy of the world. You are the vice chairman of most probably the largest conglomerate, if one may use that term, in China and perhaps one of the largest groups of this nature in the world. You are pulling together all these central large um, state-owned enterprises in China. And you were at a very early stage introducing already guidelines for corporate citizenship uh, in the country. When you look at this now, are you happy with the progress your companies have made? And secondly, do you see them well prepared for now going into the next step and conquering, if you want, the, the world outside? Thank you, moderator. I'm happy to discuss with you on this important top topic. Indeed, 
for state-owned companies in China, they have been exploring efforts in CSR-related areas since the second half of 2006. And uh, in 2008, SASEC issued number one policy paper on this very subject. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, has highly recognized our efforts. And the Secretary General has uh, uh, given high praise to our policy paper, and I have heard that our number one policy paper on CSR has been translated into English and has been circulated among UN organizations. And up so far, I believe uh, important progress has been made by state-owned companies in this area. And uh, Chinese companies are working very hard to become leading global citizens in the world. By the end of 2011, up to uh, 100 state-owned companies have established 5,894 branches in over 158 countries and regions around the world. And throughout their operations worldwide, they have uh, um, showed their global citizen responsibilities in a um, responsible way. They have uh, executed their operations in a way that uh, abide by local rules, uh, laws and regulations, respect local customs, religions, protect the rights and interests of uh, local con 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 customers, and support the development of local industries and local um, supply chains. State-owned enterprises exploring uh, global markets work to protect the rights and interests of their local employees. And all these Chinese uh, um, companies have employed a total of uh, 67,000 uh, foreign employees in global markets, and 80% uh, of their empl uh, employee base uh, in global markets are uh, local residents. And uh, throughout their global operations, they endeavor to improve operational efficiency, environmental sustainability. At the same time, these Chinese companies have uh, participated in local charity efforts. Therefore, they have uh, supported the development, the economic, social, and environmental development of local communities. In addition, um, a large number of Chinese enterprises have published CSR reports. So far, over 90 SOEs in China have uh, published reports on CSR or on environmental system. Sustainability, including new mental China minerals, and uh, these a number of uh, Chinese companies have uh, even published CSR reports for individual foreign countries, foreign markets where they operate in. And we have uh, accumulated a large number of uh, best practices among SOEs, and these successful case stories have been recorded as uh, uh, case examples for uh, academic programs at Harvard University. China Ming Mentors has been, has been awarded the Environmental Pioneer Award by the United Nations. And a number of Chinese companies um, have uh, uh, won awards um, for their excellent CSR reporting. So I'm very happy to see Chinese state-owned companies making the 
但是，以我们现在形势的要求，还有相当的差距。这是我们一个，就是说，中国企业在短时间内能够迈出这样的脱节的一步。Within such a short time frame, Chinese companies have made a huge progress in an efficient and rapid way. That is amazing, and that is something I'm very happy to see. At the same time, there are many things for Chinese companies to do. We face three challenges. The first challenge is that we need to become. 第一个挑战呢。就是中央企业开展国际化经营，虽然取得了很大的成绩，但从总体上看，还处于呢初级的阶段。我们一些企业对国际市场。还缺乏深度的认识、认知和全面的把握，缺乏国际化经营的战略指导和发展规划，缺乏一个管理制度和结构建设，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乏一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乌一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支撑，缺乫一个政策支
However, recently you've run into problems in the international arena. You are at this very moment under investigation by the European Commission for, if I may put it this way, unfair trading practices. Now, how do you feel about it? I don't want to go into trade disputes here. That is not our topic. But as a good corporate citizen who is becoming a good global corporate citizen, this must be, feel like being a setback in your attempts to really become a global player. How do you feel about it? First of all, I would like to share with you the idea when I established Trina Solar in 1997. I was thinking what kind of industry can contribute the most to human development. At that time, the Kyoto Protocol Conference was held, and CO2 emission reduction has become a very heated topic, and people realized that tackling climate change is a very important issue. And then I realized that solar industry can provide Clean energy and help with the reduction of CO2 is very beneficial and helpful for us to tackle global warming. And after hard efforts during the past 15 years, the cost of solar energy has reduced from 10 RMB per kilowatt to 1 RMB per kilowatt. And in the next three to five years, the cost of solar energy will be the same as other renewable energies. It is very possible to achieve that. So, if that happened, it will mean a great deal to the sustainable development around the world. I remember one thing clearly in 2003. At that time, we have established 40 independent solar power generating plants in Tibet. Because at the local region, there's no electricity supply. So when electricity was delivered, I have seen the exciting face and happy face of the local children when they first watched the TVs and listened to the radio. So and then I realized it's a very meaningful thing to develop solar energy. Currently, there are still 1.5 billion people around the world that do not have electricity supplies. Many of them are in Africa. In Asia, so I believe that the development of solar industry could provide values to those people. However, just as the professor has just pointed out, because at the international level there are very fierce competitions, therefore there are some uh, investigations of the solar industry in China. I think this phenomenon is not helpful to make solar energy become as cheap as other renewable energies because our aim is to make solar energy cheap so that every people can have access. So any kind of trade protectionism will hinder the development of solar energy and the value that it provides to society. So we need to think, how should we solve the problem? First of all, whether it's for developed countries or for emerging economies such as China and other developing countries, for the government and the general citizens, they should understand what's the future development trend for solar energy and what kind of value the solar energy can provide to people. So in this perspective, Trilo Solar is also carrying out our work. Because, for example, we have already carried out communications with European companies. In 2004, the energy price in Europe is 0.6 euros, and now it has decreased. And I have decreased this result thanks to the cooperation at international levels. And China also played a very huge part in the international cooperation. 
那对欧洲整个的这个节能减排是非常有利的。当时我们也给一些，比如说非洲啊，或者拉丁美洲那些国家，这个真要讲。实际上现在这些地方很缺电，电网建设需要花五到十年的时间，大的电网。现在完全可以建立一个以太能为主体，包括其他的一些，比如说呃化石能源补充的这么一个分布式的电网，或者独立的电网来对这些地方的这个。呃，城市的发展，工业的发展其中，那这样的话，这对这些地方的工业化的发展有很大作用。So if we can establish such a energy mix, it will be very helpful for those regions. 更不用说在一些特别的情况下，产生了一些，比如说，也灾害性以后啊，实际太阳能是最好的能源。我举个例子讲，呃，前一阵子不是发生了这个海地的地震嘛？海地地震以后，因为它马上就电就停掉了。A few months last year, we had seen the earthquake. After the earthquake, the electricity supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate electricity. But we quickly found that the energy supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate electricity. But we quickly found that the energy supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate electricity. But we quickly found that the energy supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate electricity. But we quickly found that the energy supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate electricity. But we quickly found that the energy supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate electricity. But we quickly found that the energy supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate electricity. But we quickly found that the energy supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate electricity. But we quickly found that the energy supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate electricity. But we quickly found that the energy supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate electricity. But we quickly found that the energy supply was disrupted. Quickly, these regions can use the energy to generate What other approach that we can adopt to better increase the value of solar energy? For example, in some African nations, because they are lacking electricity, so we are cooperating with Columbia universities and connected with telecommunication, so to provide much more energy to. 所以总的来讲呢，就是说，天河的这个做法呢，因为它本身从事的是一个对对这个呃这种这种。可再生能源的这个产业， China, 我们也希望就在全球范围内，呃，通过全球的方方面面合作呢，就是让更多的能源共享经济的能源，呃，让这个太阳能能够造全人类。And the solar industry can benefit home world. So do you see it more as a short-term setback, but in the long run, companies like you or you will continue to provide the world with cheaper energy? 毫无疑问的，就是说，我想这个、yes, 呃，天河的它的这个企业，可以说它的一个生存发展的基本理由，不仅仅说是盈利，更重要的说，它有一个超过。这个、赚钱以上的一个根本目标，就是说能够太阳能造不全人类。所以，不管是有外保护这种，实际上是一些国家、企业之间利益的争这个这个这个争分等等，我觉得这个重要。所以，我们来讲，肯定就是说，你这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目标是一个长期的目标，这个目
Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Yes, indeed. In 2004, our acquisition of Thomson business in France and our acquisition of Alcata, Alcatel's mobile phone business has not been a successful case story, but we have uh, learned many experiences and lessons, uh, lessons from this experience. Now, Professor, you want me to talk about my learnings from all these global experiences, especially from a global citizenship perspective. Indeed, we did this uh, global M&A back in 2004. When we considered this M&A deal, we primarily considered the financial factors and uh, funding factors, but we didn't give full consideration to CSR aspects of the deal. In other words, uh, we did not pay full attention to labor regulations and rules and uh, how local labor organizations could impact our local operations in France. Actually, we found subsequently that um, uh, it was much more challenging than we expected to operate our business in France, which is a totally different market. Of course, there are challenges related to uh, post-merger integration, logistics, supply chain. And uh, at that time, there was a big transformation in TV industry and mobile phone industry. At that time, uh, there were major technology breakthroughs in the TV industry, and also for mobile phone business, there was also a big um, technology uh, revolution from 2G to 3G mobile phone technology. And during the post-merger integration process, layoffs were necessary and unavoidable. Well, there, there were things that we could have done better. We expected to cut off, to uh, lay off some uh, local employees, but uh, out of our business stra strategy, we found that uh, it was still necessary to fire some local employees in France. So during this process, we found that uh, actually in Europe, especially in France, the public have very high expectations for businesses in terms of uh, CSR. Their expectations for social responsibility of companies are much higher than those in China. Of course, their labor laws and regulations are much more developed than those in China. So in that process, uh, we were in a learning process. We were learning the European, and especially French, labor rules and uh, the local expectations on a company's uh, citizenship responsibilities. On the whole, I think, uh, we have uh, basically fulfilled our CSR responsibilities. Of course, uh, we have uh, gone through many um, disputes or problems or contradictions, but all these uh, challenges have been effectively tackled. Two years ago, we settled the disputes with the French local employees on some labor issues, on some labor contracting issues. At the same time, for our M&A uh, deals, we have uh, been working very hard to fulfill our global citizenship responsibilities, and we have been pushing very hard to integrate our multiple business lines, including TV and uh, mobile phone business. Up till now, our business performance has been very good. In particular, our mo from our mobile phone business, well, as you you know, after our acquisition of, our, of uh, 
uh, our cocktails, mobile phone uh, business, the uh, overseas sales volume was about um, 7 million units of headsets in overseas markets. And uh, as you know, last year, our sales volume of TCL mobile phones has reached 38 million units of handsets in overseas markets. And TCL uh, uh, has ranked one of the top players in the handset industry. Uh, we are one of the top five in Europe and in the United States. So in this uh, process, we have been continuously learning, trying to adapt to local circumstances, trying to uh, fulfill our local responsibilities. We have to change our mindset, respect local uh, tradition, local ways of doing business. And here, I want to share with all of you how a manufacturing company, an industrial company, uh, can do to contribute to environmental sustainability and fulfill its uh, social responsibilities. Indeed, in China, uh, our economic success over the last uh, decade has uh, been achieved to some extent at the, extent, uh, at the expense of the environment. Therefore, the Chinese government has proposed uh, higher targets for carbon reduction, and uh, the government has expressed higher expectations for companies to fulfill their global citizenship responsibilities. From my perspective, we have been highly influenced by European markets when we try to understand the concept of a corporate global citizenship. Actually, from a very early stage, European companies uh, have focused not just on quality of products, quality, efficiency of their manufacturing processes, but more importantly, their social responsibilities. TCL has started its uh, overseas operations uh, very early on, and from the very beginning, the customers have made a specific, specific request to us that is, our uh, product must be both of high quality and at the same time meet the stringent European environmental standards. That is the first stage. In the second stage, while striving to stay green and uh, pursue carbon reduction goals, how can companies contribute to local communities and work with the local communities in, uh, on their environmental agendas? Well, in, on that front, the Chinese government has encouraged Chinese companies to uh, adopt best practices Chinese government has provided financial subsidies to Chinese companies for their green products. And for those not so green products, uh, that is products that do not meet the environmental the environmentally green standards, uh, companies are encouraged by the government to uh, upgrade their product portfolio by adopting uh, new technologies. For example, in the consumer electronics industry, the Chinese government has introduced huge sums of um, fiscal subsidies uh, to Chinese uh, companies and Chinese consumers alike. Uh, third, we have been investing, <laughs> investing continuously in building a circular economy in China. Thank you. Sorry, we are not so good with the timekeeping, so therefore I'm a bit rude here in uh, slowing you down, Mr. Lee. Thanks very much. So it's learning, somewhat painful learning, but you have adjusted uh, now quite considerably. Mr. May, thank you for being here and stand in for Mr. Du from your organization. You come from an organization which is called Beijing Environment Exchange, uh, which deals with environmental issues but is also involved in carbon trading. You're not one of the globalizers, but you have fairly recently very much been in the limelight. 
for a clash between international standards and Chinese standards. You have made headlines in the press, not only in China, but worldwide, by insisting on a pollution standard in Beijing, which was different from the pollution standard used by the American embassy and communicated to the outside world. That has given you a lot of room in the international press. It, I do not want to go into the technicalities here, what is right or wrong. The issue is here that international standards through international media have come into sovereign territory of China. <clears throat> and you have the task then as an organization to communicate correctly to the Chinese audience, to those who are interested. How do you manage that? That is almost like mission impossible. Thank you, Professor. And uh, I would like to thank uh, WEF for inviting me here. We are also a member uh, of uh, the World Economic Forum. Well, on, on this subject matter, first I want to say we are an organization, we are a company. Well, regarding the difference between PM 2.5 versus PM 10, uh, well, these standards are something that the uh, government and NGOs and companies are working on at the moment. I believe it requires multi-stakeholder collaboration to uh, resolve all the issues and challenges we face today. That's the first point I want to express. Secondly, regarding standards, in my opinion, well, today, in Beijing, Shanghai, and elsewhere, well, many cities are monitoring levels of PM 2.5, PM versus PM 10, as indicators of uh, uh, local pollution levels. Well, if we look at these standards from a uh, objective point of view, we have to admit that uh, both Chinese government and Chinese enterprises have been quite a, uh, have been much more aggressive in their environmental protection endeavors, and a great progress has been made so far. There are some statistics we can share with you. Uh, carbon disclosure. Disclosure Organization, CDP, uh, would uh, rank large companies in terms of their carbon emissions. They have been operating in China for four years. Out of the 100 large Chinese companies, 46 companies have published their carbon emissions numbers, of which 11 have uh, fully disclosed all their uh, carbon emissions statistics compared with 2008-2009. Chinese companies have become much more transparent in disclosing their carbon footprint related statistics. Just as uh, Vice Chairman Huang from SASEC has said, a great many Chinese enterprises have published their CSR reports and uh, they uh, have greatly improved their uh, green awareness. Therefore, compared with uh, previous years, uh, more rigorous measures have been adopted to pursue environmental sustainable uh, targets. Thirdly, we are also keenly aware of the fact that China uh, lags behind developed markets in its uh, green standards. But I think that is very easy to understand because China, in fact, is still a developing country. While developing our economy, we are trying to protect our environment. 
So we face a dilemma. As we all are familiar with the phenomena in environmental economics, that is, in the initial stage of economic growth, the amount of investment and the cost of 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 Later stages, would the cost equal or be higher? Would the cost equal or be lower than the output? Therefore, in environmental area, we have to apply the common but differentiated responsibility principle to China, which is a developing country. Well, fourthly, in terms of standard, I believe in statistics, this is a basic principle. For example. What kinds of periods? What locations? Is the average for the year or the month? Well, there are many different standards. But I believe that the standard should be more comprehensive. Well, there are many different standards. But I believe that the standard should be more comprehensive. Well, there are many different standards. But I believe that the standard should be more comprehensive. Well, there are many different standards. But I believe that the standard should be more comprehensive. Well, there are many different standards. But I believe that the standard should be more comprehensive. Well, there are many different standards. But I believe that the standard should be more comprehensive. Well, there are many different standards. But I believe that the standard should be more comprehensive. Well, there are many different standards. But I believe that the standard should be more comprehensive. Well, there are many different standards. But I believe that the standard should be more comprehensive. When I try to summarize what you've said, first point is this is work in progress. There is a lot to be done still. And Mr. Huang, you made the point of this affecting the image of the firm, which has a lot to do with how organizations communicate to the greater public. Therefore, my question to Mr. Wei about the communication. How do you do this? How do you link up with society in general? My question to all of you, and I would like to have a quick answer. When you look at the media scene today and the speed with which work is done and the presence of if you want the mobile phone, which can take photographs and send a message through the internet and Twitter and other uh, forms to the world, how do you think you have to cope? Is that also requiring a revolution in your own policies, how you deal with that? Can you move on just as you have done in the past, or do you have to accelerate? President Stagao, you are now at this very moment in, a very, in the fire, so to say. You've built up this great image, and now this image is negatively affected. How do you work with this? What do you do with this from a communication point of view? And I will also would like to have some comments from the others. <咳>看来这个企业首先，比如说这个作为天光来说，呃， so、all, 我想不管在什么环境下面，它有自己的一个、no、一个愿景， kind of、就是说我们要用太阳能造全南美。当然，我们所有的实践，我们的这个公司的发展，也是就是说，是遵循的这么一个愿景去制定战略和我们这个。Of our company and our decision makings will always be based on our visions and our goals. And now, the European Union's challenge has launched an anti-dumping case investigation, and also because of the fear competition in this industry, sometimes we see the loss of profits. Or some setbacks. And many people are concerned of this phenomenon, and people might think that the loss of profits will be a problem. Well, they have the doubt that whether the solar industry can continue to develop, whether China's solar can continue to develop. Well, can you really achieve your vision if you don't have the solar industry? Well, can you really achieve your vision? That is to benefit human society with solar energy. Well, can you really achieve your vision? That is to benefit human society with solar energy. Well, can you really achieve your vision? That is to benefit human society with solar energy. Well, can you really achieve your vision? That is to benefit human society with solar energy. Well, can you really achieve your vision? That is to benefit human society with solar energy. Well, can you really achieve your vision? That is to benefit human society with solar energy. Well, can you really achieve your vision? That is to benefit human society with solar energy. Well, can you really achieve your vision? That is to benefit human society with solar energy. Well, can you really achieve your vision? What exactly is the problem that we are facing? For example, in terms of the loss of profit in this industry and in terms of the anti-dumping investigation, what is the root cause of this? We need to look at whether this problem will still exist after five years or it's just a short-term issue that will last only for one or two years because for the development of every industry, there are ups and downs. 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 
造成了韩国的孤立竞争，孤立竞争以后造成了海外一些工厂的一些呃，或者是它的这个亏损或者是倒闭，导致了这些企业可能提提出了这个双反。那我觉得这个方法应该可以解决，通过协商的办法，通过一些办法呃去看解决解决以后，这个行业慢慢的会复苏起来，继续在新的平台上，还是说能够继续的发展下去，用这个太阳能去这个，那个时候也许太阳能会更便宜。Well, maybe in the future, the solar energy will become cheaper. The solar energy will better integrate with the electricity grid. Developed countries or developed countries or other developed countries, I believe, solar energy could become the majority of the solar energy in the world. Because we have this situation, we have this situation. So we just need to have more communication. We 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 need to have more communication. I need to have better communication. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Gao. Claire, do you see Chinese globalizers sufficiently present in international organizations? Is the voice of Chinese companies heard enough? As I said at the beginning, it's definitely more present now, which is very uh, welcome. But it, it can, these problems are so huge and so interconnected. Um, that we need everybody's wisdom and everybody's uh, innovation at the table. And I think uh, in the interest of time, I will um, just limit myself to repeating something that I heard uh, Paul Pullman, the CEO of Unilever, say yesterday, uh, which is the, the way to uh, address all of these challenges is to be humble and to say, we don't have all the answers and we need your help in solving them. So criticism is great, as long as you come also with being prepared to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee is ready on the next uh, meeting. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. Lee is dealing with issues of corporate citizenship and communicating in this sphere. Is this the task of the... PR department, or is this now the role of the chief executive to deal with that directly? Well, in our corporation, we have this responsibility. It is because we have many different segments. Under our cooperation, therefore, the leaders of different segments or departments, they all need to shoulder the global corporate citizenship. And in terms of communication, that would be the responsibility of our PR. They are responsible for the implementation. Thank you. Even if the image of the whole company may be at stake, and not only of the whole company, TCL, but in a sense also the image of China, in terms of work practices or product quality is at stake. You still think this is the public relation department or isn't it something which the leader of the firm should take up? I believe Ultimately, the leader of the cooperation needs to shoulder the responsibility of global corporate citizenship. For example, in terms of our work in CSR, we need to integrate that mindset into every segment and every link of the business process. When we make decisions, we need to think about CSRs, and the leaders of the cooperation need to implement the CSR and need to promote CSR. Himself. Only a single department, for example, public relations departments in the company, they cannot shoulder that much responsibility. Thank you. Very good. So it has to be deeply embedded in the culture of a corporation. Mr. Huang, from your point of view, with the oversight you have coming back, what are the learnings from the past? Is the speed with which Chinese companies Moving is that sufficient, or does it have to be accelerated? This, I think, ah, corporate leadership's responsibility is to first 
in order to deliver CSR. 内在需求呢，就是怎么样树立企业自己的良好形象，怎么样来提升企业的发展品质。有了内在的需求，才会形成内在的动力。第二个呢，可能要把握的呢。Motivation that they will have to strive to further promote CSR. Second, in terms of globalization, this is to establish a global business. They need to have a global concept of doing business, and they also need practices at international level. When 就在推进全球化，也在推进我们企业创建呢一个好的品牌，也是呢增强我们企业可持续发展的水平和能力。因此呢，我觉得啊，在下一步呢，我们推一在国际化经营当中啊，要非常注意理清好。但是呢，现在呢，我觉得啊，咱们坦率一点，有一些社会上有些人呢，把社企业社会责任，啊，片面的理解为。Think that CSR is just simply donate more money and do much more charity work. They are unaware that CSR is a global movement and that it has many different aspects. Ah, this is very narrow. So, but it is very narrow. 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 And they need to be responsible for the workplace safety and the health of their employees. This is a very important perspective. I think these are very important perspectives that we should look at. It is only when we have good business results that we can donate more money and we can do more charity work. Well, money, donating money and charity work is necessary, but first of all, we need to realize that as a corporation, we need to fulfill the basic demands or basic responsibilities. Secondly, in terms of the globalization, for Chinese enterprises, we are only at the infant stage. We are only at the beginning. When we compare with the world-renowned multinationals in terms of level, in terms of concept, mindset, experience, and capacity, we are still lagging far behind. So, we have already taken our first step, a very important step in globalization. However, when we compare with other high-level multinationals, we still have a long way to go. Therefore, I think the same applies to CSR for Chinese corporations. We have already taken the first important steps. However, the history is not long. So we need to gradually improve our CSR. But we have a clear goal. So that's my perspective. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much, Mr. Huang, for this very good summary. Um, in a sense, I'm almost missing the word that we're moving towards a harmonious society, which would fit very well here. We are at the end of our time. Thanks very much uh, uh, to, for the contributions here from the panel. And my apologies that as moderator I have not been able to bring the audience in with some questions. Thanks very much and have a good day.